Prime Minister Tony Blair. Thank you very much for coming. Okay, well, we have only got an hour, so let's welcome our first member of the public, Neil Coppendale from Shoreham by Sea. Neil. Mr. Blair, good evening. Evening. Would you have invaded Iraq uh, with all these tens of thousands of uh, lives lost if you'd clearly known there were no weapons of mass destruction? I would still have authorised the invasion, yes, because I believe that Saddam was in breach of the United Nations resolutions and that the evidence does show that. Although you're right in saying that from what we know now, there weren't readily de deployable weapons there at the time that the invasion took place. From what we know now, wasn't that evident to some extent at the time? No. I mean, I'm very happy to, to send you the intelligence reports which have now been published and which show quite clearly not just our intelligence services but others around the world thought that he retained the weapons that, of course, he used against his own people because many, many people died as a result of his use of chemical weapons. Well, bearing in mind the fact that, that tens of thousands of wholly innocent men, women and children have died as a result of the invasion of Iraq, tell me, Mr Blair, how do you manage to sleep at night? I don't suppose I'm, whatever I'm going to say is going to convince you of this, but I also bear in mind that there have been mass graves uncovered in, in Iraq with the remains of over 300,000 people, that there were a million casualties of the wars that Saddam started. And the best thing I can say, and as I say, I don't think I'm ever going to persuade you on it, and I understand that, and I don't disrespect your view in, in, in opposing the war strongly. If you talk to the Iraqis who have just voted in their first democratic election, I think they would prefer their life and the future they've got now to the one Mr. they have. Mr. Blair, I, I personally think that's a very large, bright red herring. Uh, obviously, every um, reasonable person wishes the very best to Iraq and its citizens, particularly now that it's been bombed to near destruction. No, and the te not. Yes, it is true. No. Oh, M Mr. Blair, uh, look at the pictures of Fallujah. They were like Dresden. In addition to which, terrorism has been introduced into Iraq where there was no organized terrorism at all before. Uh, of course, democracy is a good thing. And of course, we hope it works the right way. At this moment, we have no idea, do we, where this government is going to take Iraq in the future. Before too long, neither you or Mr. Bush we, will be able to pull the government strings. Mr. Mr. Blake, can we also, I mean, we, we will in a sense go around in a circle and, and you have said and that you respect the fact that uh, Neil has a particular point of view and that you may not be able to persuade him otherwise. In your answer, it seems to me that partly what you're saying, or maybe in, indeed wholly, is that it was, if you like, a moral decision to go into Iraq, that Iraq now is a better place as a result of Saddam Hussein no longer being in power than it was before. You've made it a better country. Well, there is also the issue of the threat because the whole evidence that's presented from the Iraq survey group saying there weren't readily deployable weapons at the time of invasion also found that he did retain the teams of scientists, the laboratories, and then every I'm sorry, I just feel so that's absolutely irrelevant, well, Mr. Blair. Well, okay. you, you had a, excuse me, Kirsty, just a minute, please. You, your mandate to invade Iraq was on the basis of a direct threat to Britain or Britain's interest. If Parliament, sir, if Parliament had known the truth of the matter at the time, you would not have got a mandate to invade Iraq, would you? Well, it was actually on the basis of the breach of the United Nations resolutions, and the same report I've just indicated. You convinced Parliament as a result of the dossier, the September dossier, largely. Would, well, is that not true? Actually, the, the September dossier was barely mentioned in it, but in fact, the, the real reason was the breach of the United Nations resolutions. But look, let me just make one point to you, just one point, and I hope... You also listen to what people in Iraq are saying. When you say there was no terrorism in Iraq before, the whole... Organised terrorism, yes, I said, the, Mr Blair. There was organised terrorism, terrorism. The whole state apparatus in Iraq was organised terrorism. 10, 20... I tell, well, you, I tell you... For, for a minute, I, I, you've had a, a very good crack at the Prime Minister, right. and I do have to say, apart from the people behind you want to question, we do have some interested parties also in the audience. I'm going to ask Natasha Paver, who I, I know would have been listening keenly to this, Natasha, because if the world is to be made a better place by Mr Blair and maybe also Mr Bush, you might have some suggestions as to, to where they could make it better. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Um, I'm actually from Zimbabwe, and my family has lost all their land. My friends have lost a lot of their family. And as you said, you did go into Iraq to um, take down Saddam off his pedestal. Why not have you dealt with Robert Mugabe, who is always in violation of the human rights? 
Mr. Blair. Um, do you mean why, why, why haven't we invaded Zimbabwe? Yes. I don't think there would be any consent from any part in Africa to our doing that, and I think, frankly, it would not be militarily doable. I totally agree with you about Robert Mugabe, incidentally. I think he's absolutely repellent. I think what he's doing to his country is terrible. But I think that the only way, I'm afraid, of bringing about change in Zimbabwe is to bring it about through South Africa and the other neighboring African countries. And I think if I was to advocate uh, the British forces on their own invaded Zimbabwe, I, I, I couldn't, I mean, you're right. Sure, Kirsty, if, if, uh, if we're going to go around the world dropping bombs on people, um, as has happened in Iraq, it should be done through the United Nations, an imperfect organization, perhaps, but still the only organization that exists. Neil, th and that is a statement, not a question. It is your statement. We've run out of time on you. Thank you very okay. much for your questions Thank to the you. Prime Minister. Mr. Blair, Mr. Blair, Blair how, how do you manage, you manage to, sleep to sleep at night? At night? Mr. Blair, Mr. Blair, how, how, do you how do you manage to sleep, to sleep at night? At night?